Good morning and welcome to worship here on the 14th Sunday of Trinity. Let us begin with a prayer. Merciful God, your Son came to save us and bore our sins on the cross. May we trust in your mercy and know your love, rejoicing in the righteousness that is ours through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you now to join in the words of our confession. Lord God, we have sinned against you and we have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the God of love bring you back to himself, forgive you your sins, and assure you of his eternal love in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our reading today is taken from the letter of James, chapter 2. My brothers and sisters, believers in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ, must not show favouritism. Suppose a man comes to your meeting wearing a gold ring and fine clothes, and a poor man in a filthy old clothes also comes in. If you show special attention to the man wearing fine clothes and say, here's a good seat for you, but to the poor man, you stand here or sit on the floor by my feet. Have you not discriminated among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my dear brothers and sisters, has not God chosen those who are poor in the eyes of the world to be rich in faith and to inherit the kingdom he promised those who love him? But you have dishonoured the poor. Is it not the rich who are exploiting you? Are they not the ones who are dragging you into court? Are they not the ones who are blaspheming the noble name of, of him to whom you belong? If you really keep the royal law found in scripture, love your neighbour as yourself, you are doing right. But if you show favouritism, you sin and are convicted by the law as lawbreakers. Forever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking all of it. For he who said, You shall not commit adultery, also said you shall not murder. If you do not commit adultery, but do murder, you have broken the law. Speak and act as those who are going to be judged by the law that gives freedom, because judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. Mercy triumphs over judgment. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save him? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about the physical needs, what good is that? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. If there's ever a point in our scripture to make the point that we should be inclusive, then this is it. There is an extension of what James is saying, which is implied to me in the content of what he tells us, about the treatment of how a person looks. He uses rich and poor as an example, but not a complete definition. It is that the church is open for all. Rich, poor, young, old. Wherever somebody finds themselves in life, it does not matter. The church is open for whoever seeks Jesus. Whoever seeks to have a relationship with Jesus through the Holy Spirit, that 
is whom the church and the communities of faith is open for. James clearly tells us that to discriminate and judge others is a sin and that we should follow Jesus' commandment of love your neighbour. With a description of our neighbour as it is in the parable of the Good Samaritan, being the person who in the past has been our enemy. We are not to judge others and that's the simple thing. I hope that we can all achieve that. When we look at the actions people do, especially those of a sinful nature, we do judge, and so does the law of the land. However, there is something much deeper than judgment. I walked alongside a prison chaplain in Durham for a while, and she taught me the difference between judging the action of an individual and seeing the person behind it. The difference between loving a person and hating the crime or the action. It was a hard and a long lesson to get my head around, but I think I managed it in the end. That the action was different than the person especially as that person had committed a crime in connection to the law of the land, had caused harm and hurt and pain to others, I was still asked to care for them. The Good Samaritan was, according to the culture of the day, the enemy of the person he showed compassion to. He was helping out someone for whom he should not have even given a first look to, let alone a second. James isn't asking us to go this far in our reading today. He just asks us not to judge people by what we see. We do, however, do this all the time. I know when I'm choosing wine for someone, I don't drink wine myself. I don't like it. I feel I haven't quite matured to that age yet to like the taste. But I go for a bottle that looks good rather than reading the blurb on the back. If it catches my eye and I think it looks like the person might like the look of it, then I get it. And that's just a snippet of things we all judge on seeing. Maybe a young person going for a walk is sadly condemned as to being up to no good. We are asked, we are called, not to judge others, to love our neighbour. I know it is harder than it sounds, but I think it's a great place for us to be, to welcome whoever comes to us, as equals not just in the sight of God, but in our own thoughts and our own feelings too. Let us pray. Father God, mighty and merciful judge of the world, grant to all those who administer justice to the spirit of wisdom and discernment that they be strong in patience, upright and compassionate, in all their work, that they may seek your will and the common good for all humanity. O Lord, give us grace not only to be hearers of the word, but also doers of the word, not only to love, but to live your gospel, not only to profess, but also to practice your blessed commandments to the honour of your name. May the Lord meet in mercy all who seek him. May the Lord comfort all who suffer. May the Lord comfort those who mourn. Lord, 
make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born again to eternal life. Amen. So we join together in the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen.